What's going on with that family? Today I'm gonna be doing some Pipeline 8010. For those of y'all who haven't seen my most recent video, I got a new job, but it's only temporary. It's only like four weeks and we're down to like two or one more week left. So I wanna be ready, man. I wanna be ready just in case if I get a pipeline test. I actually, I'm actually supposed to go test in about two or three more weeks uh, out in West Texas. And I wanna make sure that my hand is right. I also got a few uncles, uh, four of them. They're all pipeliners. They've been doing it for years. That's all they do. So they've been hitting me up, also telling me that the jobs are starting to pick up. So, you know, right now, I would love to go burn rods with them. I never ever got to uh, well with them, so it'll be a dope experience. But I want to make sure that my hands right. So today I hit up my homeboy George. He he's actually the one who sold me my SA two hundred in the back. Whenever he quit uh, doing pipeline, he did it for a few years. So I decided to hit him up. The whole way he's gonna be teaching me, coaching me uh, how to pass a uh, pipeline test. So man, y'all stay tuned. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Jorge from Welder Blog. My boy Rico come in today and weld some three seventy five wall ten inch pipe. Um, he's getting ready to test, go out of town, go in the pipeline and and they're asking for an arkansas bell hole so the only thing you got to worry about before you take an arkansas bell hole is asking the inspector whether he wants a single cap or two or multiple bead capping so for this particular fit we got a 30 degree bevel and we're using a nickel landing on both ends and we're just going to set it up in 45 degrees give it a saw blade gap and we're going to be rocking and rolling baby let's get to it I wrote that this is the top here guys, uh, that way you know where the seam is at. In uh, actual test, you know the inspector's not going to cut a strap out of the very top on the seam, so you want to put the um, seam on top. Okay, so we just finished tacking this pipe up. We did like an inch tack on top and an inch at the bottom. We're looking at the gap right now and he has a slight bigger gap, so I'm gonna let him run his side first. Then I'm gonna get down on mines. Mines could open a little, a little bit more. For the root, I know a lot of guys have trouble. So I did a little chart for y'all in an old video and it kind of gives you an idea of where to start, how many amps to use. Just use that as a guide now, cause all machines burn different. A good thing to have in mind, if the key holes and you have a big old hole missing, it's cause you're too hot, so you gotta turn it down. But I'm gonna post a chart right here for y'all to look at. Whenever y'all do a root, y'all know where to start and kind of get an idea. You wanna start your root about an inch, half an inch, and three quarters of an inch, it don't matter, as long as you're far away from the, the um, keyhole. So that way you heat up the metal before you get started penetrating, you know what I mean? Okay, so when I'm doing my root, if y'all noticed, uh, I was leaning on it, but it's a little wobbly, but it feels good just holding it, you know? Pretend you're stabbing somebody, you know, you want to hold them by the neck and just, this is your sword right here. So you're going to start right here and just keep digging in there. I just say you're about to kill him. This is his head. You're just shoving that damn sword in there. So it's kind of a little tip for y'all. So remember, have it a little bit angled, catching both sides. Don't have it like this. Never have it like that. And don't have it too down because it's not going to spread out and make, give you a bigger keyhole. So that's pretty much it to it. my tie at the bottom the bottom is usually the trickiest so what i like to do is i like to get a fresh rod enough to where like i know i'm gonna make it because you don't want to stop right before you tie in so i'm gonna uh, place my stinger like this i'm gonna use this hand to help me because this is when you want to stay steady whenever you tie in just in case you need to whip it back and forth a little bit uh, you want to be able to make sure that you're stiff and you can hold that rod good so once again i'm gonna be coming right here an inch behind and just keep going 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 Remember, you want to move with the pipe. You want to follow that a rod so you can see where you're going. Okay, so we just finished the route, man. It came out good. The inspector will pass this. We're about to uh, get ready to put the hot pass in. We're going to grind it with a 1-8 disc. 
if you're new to world and just take out all the wagon trails you don't want to leave anything make sure it's nice clean metal But for the hot pass, I was running about 80 and third gear on the remote. Uh, I could have probably gone a little hotter, but 80 was fine. Um, and it was just a, a long arc whip motion, long arcing, pushing the puddle back cooler, long arcing, pushing it back cooler, long arcing. Why I'm long arcing it is the reason why is I'm trying to heat up the wagon tracks and really wash them out by long arcing. The, the longer the arc, the the wider the puddle is spreading so that's why i'm long arcing it and it's just a real whipping back and forth as you can see from the ripples guys pretty pretty basic it takes a little practice but anybody can do it not the best welder at all but we try guys welding 6g you want to go with the pipe but at the same time you have a slight angle point it towards the top of the pipe because if you have it too low you will not be burning the top wagon track so make sure whenever you're fusing um, your metal into the pipe you're also getting the top toe of the weld so that's pretty much it guys we're ready for the fill hopefully we could fill it in one and and put a 2b cap on there you know a, a whipping j motion with again a, a slight angle pushing up making sure you're getting the top wall and on the bottom what i'm doing at the bottom i'm doing this right here so like use like use okay. but colder different temperatures the colder i go the the longer the arc i have because you can't have a, a cold puddle and run real real close to the puddle otherwise you're gonna always remember on your filler as well you want to um grind this down clean you don't want to leave no trash in here especially on your start <laughs> Okay, so I just finished doing my fill. It's a little rough, you know what I'm saying? You can see the dimes on he really stacked them back and forth right here. Check that out, the little dimes. I was a little rough. It kind of hung right here for me a little bit because I was playing with gravity and I'm um, guessing what you think, George? I was staying too long at the bottom? Yeah, I think you were staying too long at the bottom, bro, but do you know exactly what you did wrong? Because you, as soon as I told you about it, you corrected it like yeah. a I couple got, inches away from there. Right, I got a little better through here. Uh, do you think it's ready to cap or do I need to add another one? I think it's ready to cap, brother, because you're gonna add two uh two bead cap on here so you don't really need to be above flush you could right. be a little bit slightly under flush because right. on bumps like this and the ones i have over here on mine it makes it a little harder on gravity uh on your puddle because the gravity wants to bulk up and shit so if you leave it a little bit under flush i think it'll be come it'll come out a little bit better but we, we're we're good to go here man you don't okay. need to you didn't feel anymore okay for the guys who was wondering what you do is you scoot down when you scoot down right here you let it cool off and you just throw the metal back where you was at so you kind of going like uh you go down you throw it up go down throw it up go down throw it up and you got to throw it up this way because you're playing with gravity and if, if you don't do it and kind of throw it up it starts hanging over like it did right here so he's about to get ready to cap i'm gonna go uh, right behind him and let's see how it comes out Yes. You see how I'm pulling the rock like a little bit slightly that way? Yeah. This is how I feel like it helps me with gravity, I feel like, you know?
All right, so we just finished, and I ain't gonna lie to you, dude. Your shit came out good, bro. Like, it's stacked up. It looks real, real nice. Man, that shit, that, that shit looks beautiful. On my side, you know, I did decent. I think with two more coupons that I run, I should be able to get it. We had, I had a few mistakes I have to work on. Uh, you know, I need to work on my stop and starts. So it looks like it's a little bit more blended in. But uh, I did pretty good, man. It's been a while since I really ran 80-10. And I think with one more coupon that I do, I should be able to. You also uh, got the hard side, right? Yeah, this, this side is a little different for if you right hand it. Because you got to go this way. This side is a little bit better for the uh, right handed guys on the opposite side. But uh, man, still, uh, I'm pretty happy how it came out, man. I just got to tweak it up a little bit more. And the root came out really good, too. I just had one spot where it got a little too heavy, but other than that, it's tied in. Not ring in there, it looks, looks amazing. Uh, I really like it. What you think, George? I think it looks good, bro. The inspector's gonna make you cut that out real quick, see if it it if it, if it uh, doesn't break or not, but I think you pass it, Way. Cool. I think my side, I think it's all right. Let's see what's up, Way. You yeah. wanna cut some straps out of it? Yep. Let's <laughs> do it. 